and away we go, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between. Welcome one, welcome all to the Sin Shop live stream. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong, and tonight's guest right over here, the nerds of the round. We've got the whole fam damnly. We've got your Law, we've got your Sebastian, we even got Tony from across the hall. We went across the hall and we were like, dude, come over here. We got to show it. Come on. It's going to be great. Uh, so, so we're going to talk all about that here in, in just two shakes of a lamb's tail. But right before we shake that lamb's tail, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the shop. So the, this is all on behalf of the Sin Shop. Now, what is a Sin Shop, you might ask, as well you should. That's a maker slash hacker space that's located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, we offer tools and equipment that you can use to make pretty much whatever you can think of. Now, we're officially closed for renovation right now, but we do have some members who are holding the shop open for limited use. So, if you're in the Vegas area and you'd like to help us get back in action, or you'd like to stop by and check out the shop, you can join our Discord and find out all that and much, much more. Now, to join the Discord, you're going to hit up sinshop.org forward slash Discord to find the latest information on the shop. And to make sure you're notified of future events, including virtual ones just like this one, you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sinshop. Welcome! Yeah. Hey. <laughs> what's going on what's going on pong oh, i knew it it's nerds i'm back we're back <laughs> we're, we're yeah. back with you're back with company we're no longer just in the twitch in the twitch chat now we're, we're right. here in person yeah we, right. we decided to invade the show it's a it's a ww nwo uh invasion style you know <laughs> yeah. you your 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 kevin nash your scott hall and your hulk hogan coming yep. in right now <laughs> they have they have off the top rope here, here they come. <laughs> Elbow from the sky. That's right. So, uh, Law. <laughs> Let's start there. Returning champion, COO of Inbeyond. Yes. And from your bio, well, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that later. Okay. So, <laughs> COO of Inbeyond. What is Inbeyond, you may ask? We will tell you shortly. Tony, Inbeyond CFO and Master of Analytics and Research. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I That's love it. That's what I'm told. That was in the press I thing. I was, you're, you're I was, source. You have, you have I was, excellent I was, source. I, I was I was not told that there was a bio needed, but sure, I will take. I mean, the CFO <laughs> thing is true. The analytics thing, you know, it's it's sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And in Center Square tonight, we've got Sebastian, the uh, creative brand officer for In Beyond, and in, sorry, In Beyond. And the guy behind the Nerds of the Round podcast. Now, I had the pleasure of, of hanging out with you guys. Uh, what was that, a month, two months ago? Something like that? Yeah, about a month. Yeah, about, about a month, month ago. Yeah, Captain uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier was still on. Mm. Mm. So good. So yes. good. So Indeed. good. So okay. Hey, so. <laughs> in, in the post game, we got, we're, we're going to have to talk uh, Loki. In the, that's going to have to be in the post game. Oh yeah. Oh, it's All Loki right. is already prepped. We are prime ready to go for the madness that is Loki. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We're very, very, we're very excited. We're you know taking the week off next week, and then the week after that, we're back on on Tuesday. Then that Wednesday, Loki premieres, and then uh, we will be back that following Tuesday to review it. So we're really excited. Absolutely. Yeah. We are excited for it. Just seeing the previews alone right now, it's yeah. like it, it's it's. I I I feel like you know what they're teasing me. They're teasing me. Teasing. And then um. Oh, we just learned that with the casting also too of Hawkeye, which I believe they're supposed to come out later this year, that um, Florence Pugh, who's going to be in the Black Widow movie, is actually casted in that too. And I was like, oh, we got stuff to talk about. (laughs) Post game, post game, I promise, post game. -game. Yes, yes, post game. (laughs) All right, but we're not in the post game right now. Oh, that reminds me, speaking of the post game. So if you're watching us on, uh, on Twitch, congratulations, you are going to get the entire thing. We're going to get a whole two hours. If you're watching us on YouTube, on the other hand, you're getting a condensed, more YouTube-friendly sized package of this. So if you'd like to see the whole show, you can head on over to uh, twitch.tv forward slash sin shop and catch the whole thing raw, including whatever sound goblins are sure to pop up at some point, uh, (laughs) if you guys saw last week's episode. But uh, yeah, you can check it out there. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, if you like what you see, please do fling us a like. But if you don't like what you see, if you're like, this is this is crap, I don't know why I, why I even came here, put a comment down below and let us know why, because we do actually read everything that, that you guys send us, and uh, we do answer all of the things, and so you let us know what you want to see, and we'll we'll make the show together just like that. Anyway, speaking of making things together, Inbeon. Yeah. What's an Inbeon? I, uh, who wants to take that is, one? Is, is, is it law? <laughs> I want to tag you in it. You you you've been around longer from than me in the, in the company. I have. Yeah, I yeah, made yeah. Uh, six I'm, years. I'm the new guy. 
<laughs> so uh, In Beyond is a creative space, um, networking, all the good fun stuff, uh, mm-hmm. platform, company, uh, basically started by Hutch, our, our CEO, mentor, big brother, all the good fun stuff um, to kind of take people's projects, get people collaborating and get people you know to that next level, as he likes to say. Um, it's literally a place to inspire people and bring people together on projects that otherwise they wouldn't really have the access to um, get them on platforms they probably wouldn't have uh, had the access to and really get people out there. Yeah. It's amazing. And, like everything I know about about all of you guys, you you keep popping up in projects exactly like that, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, spitballers yeah. being one of them. But the, uh, the the chat, it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it kind of is. It is. <laughs> but don't, and, yeah, and, and, and through oh, it, we've, we've been able to do like, you know, in Beyond Con as a, as a show now for the past. Oh, this is like, I think, show nine. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. It's, it's, been, it's, it's been going on. It's been going yeah. on for a while. For a while, yeah. yeah uh, I, so I think I, this is show nine. Seabass's uh, is uh, new showrunner. Have fun with that. <laughs> He's this is my third. This is this I is know your show. And I'm so proud of you. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I tease him only because I I, I was the showrunner with Hutch um, uh, beginning on, and, I, and as much as I love it, it's way too many hats to wear. And Seabass wears it much better than me. Sport that hat, sir. <laughs> that, that, that and a bunch of Red Bull that runs them. I don't know. We, we, all, we, all, we all wear a bunch of hats. Yep. That's yeah, what we're wearing we, hats right now. Well, I just saw the chat. Well, no, we actually, well, what was crazy because the pandemic happened, obviously, everybody knows about the pandemic. Last year, we did the show virtually, and it was more of that we wanted to do the show for fans and creators. Um, did the show absolutely free, which we're going to do again virtually, absolutely free for creators, vendors, and everybody, and fans to come to. And we're making it more of a learning space again. Pe- um, creators learning amongst each other, people learning amongst their peers. August 28th and 29th, we will be doing our virtual show. Um, what was great about the virtual show because the show originally was always in Long Island, New York. Um, the last show we did was at Hofstra University. And being able to do a virtual space, we saw that we were able to connect more people that we wouldn't be able to do if it was isolated to a single venue. And we were able to showcase other people, other creatives that way too. We had creators that normally couldn't make our show because they were just too far. So we were able to pull people together in this event space virtually. And we're looking to do that again. And when we do do our live show, we want to keep the virtual event with the live show to make an extended component of that. And um, again, we're doing the show um, for fans this year again for free, because again, we want people to come to a space to learn, create, network and learn amongst their peers. That's that's the whole purpose of the show. And it's family. We're all family. Absolutely. I was just just saying yesterday, my favorite (laughs) compliment. This is how I know we had a good show is when someone goes, Man, when I come here, it feels like, you know, I'm coming back to like a family reunion or something. It feels like, you know, I'm, I'm not coming back to like a show. I'm coming back to like see friends, old friends and whatnot. So that makes me feel really good about, you know, our shows. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that before you said it. So, so when you say show, you're talking, you're talking conventions. What, what I've heard from a lot of people is, is man, I cannot wait until we can have a show in person. But it sounds to you, to me like what you your takeaway from this whole past experiment and whatever that was uh <laughs> is has been like well you know maybe maybe the online thing is the right way to go i mean for me personally i think it is because um me and law um did a lot of shows like law would be with hutch with um, manning the table yeah. i did a lot of shows um in artist alley and everything we all came together and was like you know in beyond we always used the tagline um for creators by creators because we saw how people were being treated at other cons we saw mm. how we were being treated and we're so- like you know what we don't want to be treated that way and so we were again came it was coming together as and and that's what it was in beyond his family of a bunch of creators that started coming together starting and even like a lot of people go listen i love in beyond i come to the show every year as a reset because of all the bs that's out there and um we just want to create that fun family environment and then when the pandemic happened again we like 
literally when Hutch said we're going to go virtually in March of last year and we were all kind of bummed out just for a few hours, but then our chat that we have internally blew up on the possibilities of how we can connect everyone yeah. in the community and do something to help uplift people, especially through a time where a lot of people we felt needed it. Like we, we've had, we, I, I'm going to give a shout out to Tashio geek girl, um, who just got married her and Jason. They, uh, they, they're awesome cosplayers. Um, he goes by nerd truth and they were judges last year for complete for a cosplay competition. But she also was like, listen, I want to do something about mental health. I'm like, listen, go for mm. it. And she did it. And I, and that was something we, again, we wanted to do that to help the community. And yeah. she came out. She did that. We helped out that the editing and all that. We put it together and it was out there. Yeah. I was talking to somebody uh, just yesterday about not choking up on reality. You know, that's basically one of my, uh, not really rules of life, but just kind of like, you know, a thing to keep in mind, basically, you know, don't choke up on the bat. Just like, just relax. You know, the things are going to be okay. Float. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Um, yeah. and, but so many people try to hold on to the old ways. And I yeah. think that that's what happened a lot this past year is everybody was like, no, this is the way that we do these things. And since they couldn't do those things, it just kind of, boop. they were, you were forced to, uh, you know, not do those things it wasn't there wasn't a choice about, about it right and i think that's what was most jarring for people was like they lost that ability to be like hey i want to do it my way it's like, yeah. you know either you got to adapt or you just don't do a show yeah and it yeah. was and it was it's heartbreak like, go ahead sonny i'm sorry no i mean it's just it's all learning curve so you know we're, we're seeing that everywhere we're seeing with conventions you're seeing it with people wanting to go back to work most yeah. people you know most people want to stay home they want to work remotely and companies need to need to deal with that Mm -hmm. uh, you've been hiring talent and you realize you have talent and you've got people that are capable of doing doing really good jobs at home in the comfort of their home there's people who don't want to commute you don't want to you don't want to sit in public transportation you don't want to sit in traffic mm -mm. you don't want to spend money going out i grab it you know there are people who still want to do that and that's fine uh you know people should just have the choice to do those things but when it comes to these shows you know i would say the the most the biggest the biggest thing the biggest hurdle we got to find is how do we get people paid at these shows digitally how yeah. do artists find a way to generate revenue because right now the way they've been doing it from my experience kind of looking at them have been i don't i can't spend money if i don't know how to get to you yeah and i think once a platform figures that out that's gonna be that's gonna be the big money generator for conventions well, because while we will have people who will go to conventions you will all you're gonna there's gonna be a ton of people who don't want to go because sure you have your your vaccinated circles of people and mm -hmm. the CDC says what they need to say. And we probably get booster shots and all these other things, mm -hmm. but that's for your circle. And you expand that circle to the people you trust. Um, will you be going to conventions and still masking up or we, do you feel, do you not feel comfortable? And that's everyone's prerogative, everyone's right to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to grow and figure out how can we make these shows be lucrative for both people who go and table in person and for people who go and present themselves uh, digitally, and that's that the bar the bar of entry to get in at that point is also much lower because you've got artists who may not be able to one pay for a table and yeah. pay for transportation and pay for a hotel. Like there's so many other factors that you have to put in that they are hoping to make back at a table that they now don't have to worry about if they do it from their home. They just need to be able to get themselves out there so that people can still have a good experience with that vendor in artist alley and you know they have that whole thing of like you know take my money i want to buy your work and i think yeah. once we figure that out it's just going to be a, it's going to be a gold mine it's going to be a gold mine a gold rush to get to the best shows so and how what's do you been, uh, oh yeah I'm sorry. i know i was gonna say and what's been a motivator for me this year and yeah. just with conversations with hutch law tony everyone in um our group um that we that i talk to on a daily basis um the motivator is that researching a lot of what there were a lot of virtual cons last year and there were some that were great they did great things and there were some that um again i felt and just even talking to fellow creators who've gone to some of these shows that were taking advantage of and just doing it for because i mean it, like people being charged two three four hundred dollars for a virtual ad 
what to me was not um a great way of hosting their, the virtual <laughs> con especially when we were trying to get the message that um you know that these things are good we want to get people attracted to them yeah. and there are people taking advantage of of creators and all that out there for a 30 minute spaces which I was yeah. like, that that doesn't sound like a virtual con to me. That doesn't sound like an experience and you're not giving some. And that's been one of my motivators, especially with seeing like a lot of people last year complain that they weren't making money. They didn't know how to do their business. They didn't know how to take it to the next level. And I was like, you know what? My motivator and everyone's motivator is like, how can we teach people to help them take it to the next level? How can we get them connected with people? How can we get them network with other people? How can we get them to learn amongst their peers? Because, I mean, learning digital marketing, that there, there's a lot like when you're we, when you're going out there to be an artist, be a creator, you're not thinking of a lot of these things because you're just like, I'm just going to um, buy a table, put mm -hmm. my art out there, boom. Now there's no conventions. How do I market my art? Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of business that goes in this. And one of the best advice, which I'm gonna give a shout out to Chris Duckett, was before I started vending and everything, um, he said, study a business class. Mm -hmm. You're gonna learn art, you're always gonna learn art, but study business. And even Amy Ta um Amy, um, who's a cosplayer, and she goes by Amy Taco, she was talking a lot about that, about business and all that. And I was like, you know. That should be one of the founding factors with this year is like we should help people learn more of how to take their creative art, take yeah. it and make it the business that they want to make it if they're looking to make a living off their, their stuff. And again, we're like, you know what, let's just do it for free like we did last year because we don't want people to feel like one, they're being taken advantage of and two, that there is a community that is out there who wants to see you strive, who wants to see you succeed. And yeah. That's been one of my motivators this, with this upcoming show. Yeah, I, that, well, that's what I was going to ask uh, Tony a second ago. Is you know, it sounds like that's a really hard circle to square because you have online presence, which has historically always been free, right? It, it's a, in a way, it's kind of like you're going through what the uh, what the music industry went through in the early two thousands, where everybody was originally used to paying for CDs. And now all of a sudden there's Napster and I don't have to pay for CDs anymore. How do you yeah. make music make money? You know, is what they had to answer. And so now I guess the question would be on how to make art, make money, you know, when, when you're doing it all virtually or. I mean, I think it depends on how we do the convention, the convention space, yeah. because the whole, the whole idea is like you have, you've got panels and people will, will show up to panels which is never which is never a problem but you've got to you've got to we, ha we have to find a way to recreate the experience of walking down artist alley because those uh. are the those are the individuals that we that we see a lot when i when i went to like a show with sea bass and going to stuff you always you've got the panels you've got the famous people and all that that's going to drive that's going to drive revenue no matter what because people are going to go it's really trying to figure out how can we get to a point where people are able to have that whole situation of walking down an aisle and seeing art on the left and the right of you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I haven't seen a platform that allows it. Most of these platforms that I've, that I've been on, it's usually just jumping in into a chat and you don't, you don't want to have jump into a chat experience, which is just flooded with noise. Cause that's also an unpleasant experience. It's different mm. when it's ambient sound, when you're walking through the, you know, through the Javits center, that's yeah. kind of just the hustle and bustle. But if I have headphones on, I don't want to hear, all that, all that crap. So it's just, it's, it's really, it's, it's really just trying to figure that out or having a way to like click and point. Cause I remember when I did San Diego Comic Con last year for the pandemic, I couldn't, yeah. I, couldn't get to, I couldn't get to anything. Like they gave a listing of all these shops and they gave you a map, but the map only had booth numbers. But if you don't know what the booth numbers are, you you can't click into anything specific. Yeah. And I, I try, I tried it for all of five minutes and I was like, I'm done. I can't. I'm just going to I'm just going to watch the pre-recorded panels and and that's it. Um, and I think and and I, and, and yeah, and, and, and go into that, too. I mean, we we've actually been talking to creators like I mean, I'll give Alex a shout out. Alex Apunzi is from Avery. Give me a lot of people shout outs. And also to want to say hi to Aurelis. How you doing? Hi, Aurelis. <laughs> um, so, no, I mean, it, it, it's like this. So we've actually been talking to people because uh, one of the things is we don't know what artists made last year because. Yeah. 
um, we were putting the store links. We don't have access to people's store links. So we mm. don't know what people are doing. And, and, and a lot of it too is people don't know how to read their analytics or what they're doing in their stores. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. And, and we were very upfront about that, especially with the creators who we're speaking to. And a lot of it too is like, we can't sell a lot. Like if you notice when you go to a con, a lot of people do a lot of fan art. We can't sell fan art, especially mm. in the online space, because you will be hit with a cease and desist. Yep. Um, right. and DCMA, so we're, we're, yeah. We're playing with ways where we're talking to people of like, you know, yes. maybe getting into the space of helping sell original artwork, selling original concepts, selling people's original comics, because that we can help market. And if you have an online store and you're selling fan art, then that's great. You give us the store link, we'll put it there. But it's also teaching people how to read that so that you can actually go from point A, point B and know um, how you're doing with those pieces. Um, it goes back to what we were saying about the education component. Mm -hmm. Like you can, we can sell you a bunch of stuff, but if we can teach you something that's going to be valuable for your business and for you as an artist and as a creative, like that's invaluable. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. that's ultimately the win for us. Yeah. And yeah. so it's, so we're, we're doubling down more on how we can make the teaching component and whatever other component that we can introduce or one, it's valuable for the fan too. It's valuable for the vendor who's coming to us, but like, Hey, listen, I want to get my name out there. Three, the networking component, because getting into this creative life, I've learned that networking is key. It has always been key. And that's how I've built the relationships that I have with the people. I mean, but law, Tony, Tony was a Tony, Tony and law are prime examples of my networking. Mm -hmm. I met, met law in beyond con. He can't get rid of me. I met Tony in the elevator when we lived in the, in the same building. He can't get rid of me now. Like we're, we're, we're still, yeah. and look, we, we, we have all four. Like if you told us six years ago that we were all three B together with a podcast together, I, we all be like, yeah, God, mm -hmm. yeah that's not going to happen. Yeah. And even so it's like, that was one of the things I took from business class was networking. That's how I met Eric Hutch. Through yeah. Eric, I met Law. Um, and through various other people, it, it's been like that. And and it's helped take, and we're always going to sound corny, taking it to the next level because we've always synergized. And we we all want to make that million dollars. But I, I, I'll quote Mark Franco from Wayward Raven on this is that if you're looking to become a creator to make millions and millions of dollars, then you're getting into the wrong game right now because – you have to go through the struggles and not everyone's going to be that person to hit that viral content right there. And then, cause like my Spider-Man piece, it went viral for a little bit and then mm -hmm. it died down. It, and, and again, it's like, okay, you got to recreate that. You got to recreate that. If you get into that, just again, for the money component, you're going to phase out quickly and burn quickly. Yeah. You have to be a student in this game. And that's what we want to teach people. It's like, if you continue to be a student, you will seek success. Absolutely. Yeah, the two things that I was told in, in, in my DJ career that I carried with me the entire time is, is uh, number one, do it for the love and the money will follow. Because if you, like you said, if you're going into it with the mindset of I'm going to go and be a star or whatever, you can't, you cannot go into it with that mindset. You have to go into the mindset of I am going to play as well as I possibly can from my heart. And if you do that, then you will most likely, if you're lucky, you will most likely get all that other stuff. All that other stuff will just come because you're a good artist and because you play from the heart and because, you know, people will, re you know, what the, you know, real recognizes real, you know, the people, people will, will see Absolutely. if you're genuine, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, go ahead. No, I was just, you know, just to that, you know, to that point, like we knew, you know, breaking or doing whatever you had to do like this is just this is just something to do for fun and for for the love of it Absolutely. uh you know and, and that that drive to do it is what helps us be consistent yeah because there's you've got to there's consistency to this whether mm -hmm. you're twitch streaming or whether you're podcasting or whether you're youtubing you know you don't start out like you know as we all said making making cash but mm -hmm. there's got to be a drive that makes you want to do this every week or every other week or every day or however you do it but it's like we're taking our first week off next week and that's the first time we've literally taken a week off from going yeah. lives since on um, since october yeah i'm live sorry and, and, uh, yeah. live I'm, and I'm, we're recording like I'm, yeah it's yeah. a solid <laughs> actual no 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 it's fine us. you don't you don't need to apologize it's just it's just one of those things where yeah. where you know that's that's what that's what helps that's what helps us and gives you know people like a routine 
Yeah, us as right. humans like a routine and like to like a like the habit of knowing yes the nerds are going to be on on tuesday nights and whether they're talking about a show that they're streaming yeah. or they're talking about a random a random topic we know that they're going to be on unless like there's an announcement that we're going to take the day off or we're moving to wednesday or something something along those lines mm-hmm. right. but that's that's what drives us the first and seeing time. people you know seeing people comment uh seeing people comment who are not in our friend circle yeah. that that drives us that's just like mm-hmm. great when we see people comment like i don't like we we've said offline like yo do you know this person like no i was like so this is a legitimate yeah, random a, that found us is like a day one yeah like, Aurelis is a day one followed us around and like oh, you're wow. the best we love you so much oh yes, that is so yes. cool yeah, yeah we, so like we, it's been great uh, yes, we need to discuss and process many shows. <laughs> <laughs> there will be listen, discussion was, and processing. Listen, I'm going to yeah. give her brother's credit because she she coined that the, that 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 uh, catchphrase "game of tone" when we did uh, That's pretty nice. quest, when we did uh, questions against livers, uh, which we yes. will be doing again, and we I promise. we will announce it. We were proud. That was fun. That was so, really fun. And for the benefit of people doing that. For the benefit of the newbies, what is Questions Against Livers? That's an awesome <laughs> it's a, it's title. A, it's a it's a brand new because we don't really do segments, right? So yeah. it's a we we decided to do a show with uh, SketchFed, uh, which has uh, Sean Lucas Video and, and Charlie and Pastor Charlie Williams, um, <laughs> and they and we decided to do a game of of asking questions to one of the duos and the other ver- the other person has to drink. So Law was going to come up with questions and he was going to ask me and Sean. And if I got the question wrong, then um, then Seabass had to drink. If I got it right, Charlie had to drink and then vice versa. Uh, so the topics were Game of Thrones and Star Wars because I'm a huge Game of Thrones person and Sean, uh, he was like, I'll do Star Wars. Like that's his, yeah. that was his bread and butter. Yeah. So then uh, Law had to figure out some questions and it wasn't like a crazy long thing. It was like literally like four questions. Oh, it was like yeah. part of the thing. We were still going to have right. a discussion. We just wanted to have some fun with it. And it ended up being uh, a lot of, a lot more fun than we thought it would be. <laughs> yeah. So oh, we definitely, so good. and then it got to a point where after we finished the initial round of questions against livers, we then yeah. all started asking each other questions mm-hmm. about <laughs> random crap. And then if you got it wrong, you had to just take a drink. So <laughs> that was, uh, that was a really good time. So it's definitely something we want to, we want to continue. Uh, obviously, not getting monetized or whatever because there's alcohol yeah, being consumed on listen, air. Listen, but it's it, all for the it's, it's all for the fun. Right. It listen, was a whole pop- it's a whole lot of fun. So. It, it, <laughs> all right, so uh, I wanted to let everybody know uh, a little bit about the, the shop here. This all, of course, is on behalf of the Sin Shop. Uh, the Sin Shop is a uh, makerspace that's located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we offer the tools and equipment that you can use to make whatever you can think of. Now we're officially closed for renovation, but we've got some members who are holding the shop open for limited use. So if you're in the Vegas area, you want to help us get back in action, or you just want to check out the shop, join our Discord and find out all that and much, much more. Now, to do that, you're going to go to sinshop.org forward slash Discord to find the latest on the shop and to make sure you're notified of future events, including virtual ones like this one, you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sinshop. Also, I wanted to let you guys know, watch this space because robot combat is there's a thing there's a thing that's gonna gonna be a thing, and I I didn't say anything about it at all. I've said nothing, but mm, just mm, 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 mm. I love robot combat. Oh, I want that. Right. I want more it's of great. that. Oh, there will be. <laughs> there will be. In the future, there will be robots. <laughs> we were talking about making money off of the show earlier, right? Mm. And and you know, there's little things like that that you have to do. Like there's, you know, running ads and stuff like that. We kind of had a, a little bit of a back and forth here on whether or not we should run ads. Cause you know, Oh, I don't really like ads. Okay. I got you, but they're going to run ads. It's right. a matter of us deciding when versus Twitch deciding when, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, you want to know what it is. It's like a lot of people um have to realize that this is also like work because there are times like we're just all like haggard. It's work. Like, is it working out? And yeah, ads help generate revenue to keep you doing what you're doing because we got to pay the bills too. Mm-hmm. um And even so, like a lot of people, well, you're running a show for free this year, a virtual con. How are you going to make money? I mean, there are a lot of other ways to make money. Mm-hmm. Ads. um There's also donations. If people want to leave donations, like, yeah. come on, like that. That, that sponsors, too. sponsors. Like, yeah. Last but, year, I think we had who I think we you know, Affinity was a sponsor last year of the show. Oh, neat. And 
Um, uh, not last year, the year before that, when we still had the live uh, show. In, the in person, I think the in yeah, person. Per- last in person we had was uh, Affinity by Serif. Yeah, was uh, was one of our sponsors. Yeah. So earlier in the chat, somebody mentioned uh, they said uh, I don't mind paying money for things if I know it's the artist that gets the lion's share, not some other publisher, host, businessman somewhere in another country. It's the argument the gaming publishers like Steam, Apple, and, and Epic Tencent is having publicly recently. And, and I thought about that because you have to realize at some point that someone is paying for the infrastructure. There are servers right now yeah. that are heating up a warehouse somewhere, pro- actually mm-hmm. probably where I used to work, but, uh, but they're heating up a warehouse somewhere uh, that costs money, like real money, like a lot of money. And so you have to pay for that somehow. Yeah, what were you going to say? No, and I think it's it's coming up with a with a structure that's fair because I I get it a lot with um when there's like publishers out there like well the artist only gets ten percent but it's like the artist created that you didn't create that so it's finding fair ways where the artist can get compensated and and we're always talking about like how can artists how can creators start to create a residual income where they're mm. making money continue to make money and don't have to worry about right, it we're right. always talking about how can we develop that system? And a lot of it is too is that, you know, if we're going to take a cut of something, we're not taking a chunk of it. We're getting like, okay, give us this itty bitty piece of the pie, but yeah. this is for you. Right. Right, right. there. Because you create it and, it and it's like, you know, with Ambion, Ambion does publishing. We mm. publish like uh, example, Bad Luck. Bad Luck is one of the uh, many comics we have published. Um, and the creators for that material own 100% of their material. So if they want to take it away from Mimbyon, they can. They own 100% of their material. Mm-hmm. And the publishing and all that, we it, it is a fair uh, trade with them. I believe at one point we were running 50-50, but then we started increasing their spread where it was like, listen, they, you're the creators of the content. We're just helping publish. And a lot of it too was that- It was a crazy concept for a yeah. lot of people to understand. It was like, we're yeah. not here to make money off of you. We're here to help make you money. Exactly. Right. And We're not explaining too, what a lot of people and what a lot of people didn't know is that even though we're like, yeah, it's 50 50 spread, 50 goes to the company, but that 50 spread of the company is also going to paint towards the materials of the printing, this, that. So, you know, mm-hmm. part of the company spread is also investing into your material. Yeah. And so a lot of the artists didn't see that and 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 that's when you know a company is working for you when they're like, okay, we're taking this. We're like, example we were running. I was like, listen, we if we could share sell people's original art, we just take this, which will pay for the materials, and they're getting the bulk of what they're gonna make. And yeah. that's that's usually and you're saving people from like, for example, I've gone out there and had to go make prints. When you go to a company that makes prints, they want you to print a certain amount, and mm-hmm. then that, and then now you're stuck lugging around prints. If oh, we yeah. can print yeah. it for you on demand, guess what? You're selling the print for 10, 10 bucks. We take twenty bucks towards funding and everything for the company and all that. Mm-hmm. That two bucks you would have hated anyway to get it printed somewhere. Yep. And we're handling like shipping it and all that out for you. And guess what? You sent one print to us. That was it. Yeah. Person was- ordered one print, and you're good. Yeah. Whereas you, you, whereas you're taking care of the shipping and and all the things. Uh, yes, I get it done. Says integrating ads and content uh, through a value added experience always favors well with me. Otherwise, I furiously <laughs> smash the skip ad button or rage quit as if my exit will prove a point, which is an exercise in futility. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I get where yeah. you're coming from, but but on a smaller show, I, and I don't know if you guys have this as well. Um, you can't really get sponsors until you get to a certain point. It's not like Skillshare is going to be interesting, you know, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, no, sure. You know, once you reach yeah. a certain point, like uh, yeah. at most, we can do uh, sponsored uh, segments for um, Anchor, which yeah. is which is nice and, and slowly uh, generate ad revenue on that. And then oh, nice. uh, just putting ourselves on other platforms to get more, you know, more listens and plays and whatnot. Yeah. But, you know, it takes time. It Like once we I'm between the three of us and and. With Jesse, all things are possible. Shout out to Jess. Nice. Um, like we're gonna get there soon enough. I, you know, Seabass has been saying it for sure. But like, yeah. I by the end of this year, we're gonna be in a good spot. Yeah, yeah. and I think, and I, and I think what's really cool, you know, like you had mentioned when <clears throat> when you're getting sponsored with the best YouTubers I see is when they do those really good contained pitches in their video and they yeah. have like a really unique way of doing it. Mm-hmm. But I think since we're not at that level yet, right, being doing an ad for your platform, I think there's nothing 
to me, there's nothing wrong with that. Like if we do an ad for Anchor, well, that's the platform we do our, our podcast on. Mm-hmm. So sure, I will do that because you you Anchor does all the heavy lifting for us. Right. And then if you see the ads for StreamYard, because I always see these StreamYard ads, mm-hmm. we'll clearly do an ad, write a, an ad for StreamYard because they're the platform that we 100% use and we have never had a hiccup and they're great. And there's nothing wrong. Like there isn't, uh, it's not a BS ad that we're just doing it to do it. These are both platforms that have helped us get our, get our work out there. So if we got to do like a quick 30 second pitch because it's our platform, that's fine versus doing uh, a pitch for something that we don't really, you know, care about or we have to or whatever. So I think there's like a healthy medium of doing pitches for your platform or doing like the integrated spots because you're being sponsored, but you can, you can add your flavor to it. Which then people are like, all right, I want like there's a YouTuber, he's a cooking YouTuber. His name is Adam Ragusia. He's got yeah. the best, the best pitches when he talks about his sponsors. It's I don't know how he does it. It's like the way he transitions from content to sponsor, then back to content. It's like it's it's great. It's one yeah. of my favorite. It's like people comment and it's like, it's like yo, dude, you really do this. Like you really, he really spins. It's really good. It's a nice, really fun one. Nice. Like, yeah. yeah. On one end, you got stuff like that. On the other hand, uh, on the other end, I was watching a uh, a Mark Rebier, uh video earlier today. You know, you know who that is. He Mark does. Rubio? Oh man, he does improv music on the fly. Here, I'll I'll oh, throw yeah. a link to the to the actually to the <laughs> the one I'm talking about. I'll throw that up in the chat. Uh, right. But he, in the middle of it, he did an ad for Manscaped, and it was completely one hundred percent clear that he had never ever even looked at whatever it was. He like like. He was like, which is, uh, it helps you shave your junk or, you know, like he just goes on and on about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, so it sounds to me like that's, that's really the secret sauce is, is really no, really figuring out how can I cover my costs as a producer or as a, uh, you know, production company, whatever, however you want to put it, uh, as, as the facilitator to get the artist to the market, right. The guy that handles that in between, right figuring out the balance between that and like with the, the situation that you described earlier, Sebastian, which was the, you know, like we're going to charge you $300 for what was it like an ad that runs or for, for 30 uh, minutes for 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's so, you're not, it, to me, it's like this. It's like, you're, you're thinking too much of the old ways because the digital yes. space right now is it, it, it Again, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, losing my thought, but no, the digital way where we're trying to do it is that you know we can help show creators who make the most and do it for them. Right. And where it's like you know three hundred dollars for thirty minutes, that's that's too much. That's that's you're not do. What are you doing for that creator? Yeah, you're, that thirty minutes right there, you're probably not doing a lot for them. Whereas like, hey, I'll charge you fifty bucks. We'll put together this ad for you, but this mm-hmm. ad is not just isolated for this. This ad will be about your brand, your brand where you can take it play it on anything that you um feel fits for you mm. this is tailored for you you yeah. send us a couple of clips that um this amount um you know and that 50 dollars will go a long way right and right. it's like, oh, okay now i have an ad to take with me whereas at 300 dollars oh 30 minutes and it's like dude it's like you're charging the price of a table and it's like and, and i go again i get it we have expenses to pay Mm-hmm. as creators yeah. as showrunners as we uh, and running for the podcast and all that we we have expenses that we have to pay right but um when you're trying to milk creators that are at the same level as you or who are um you know trying to figure this game out and even and i'll even say creators who are at a higher level as it's like listen it's like stop milking people at the end of the day don't milk it yeah probably our, your best bet is collaborating with people like people yeah you know especially on this level Mm -hmm. trying to get to that next stage and that next big step like collaborate with them it's it's one of the like most underutilized resources is just being like hey yo i know you got like a t-shirt company whatever the case is send me a t-shirt i'll wear on my stream i'll shout it out i'll do whatever there you go and that's it and then i can i can make a link or you can give me like a a code that i can send people back and be like yo where'd you get that shirt from oh i'll send you here like bam yeah that's it. It's simple as that. Like you don't, you don't have to make fifty thousand dollars off the contract, or, or if there is a contract, it's like, yeah. hey, I'll wear your shirt and send me a link, and I'll send people over that way. That's Absolutely. it. You know. And also too, if and also too, like we were having that conversation. If our show, or if anything we do, helps one person to take it to the next level, where they get that nugget, mm-hmm. we did our job. Yeah, yeah, we and, did it. And like, and to that, and to that point, you know, I'm not gonna. 
obviously pro- there's a there's this project's in a work in progress. So we're not going to say any names or anything. But we had a show where we had an artist come on. He was talking about one of his projects, and then we had a one of our listeners said that they are a, a, a tradesperson, and now they're collaborating. Oh, that's great! Like, yeah, like yeah. they like after the show was ended. They jumped on. We, we had we had the creator come on, and he spoke to the person on the show. They figured something out, and now they're working on something together uh, for 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 the project. And that just kind of, that literally happened on the whim, live on the show, where it was mm-hmm. like, "Hey, I do this," and the creator was like, "Are you serious? I want to talk to you." Yeah. And we had them connect right at the show was over in, yeah. in the green room. So. And that's like that. That's a straight connection. That's something that we we definitely want to see of getting of getting people connecting people together to you know to to keep pushing each other and, and getting or getting themselves out there. Yeah. And we've been we and we've been seeing a lot more and more of that. I mean, that was just one of the examples that we saw two creators connected, and and yeah. we've been seeing more like for example, two two people we've had on the show on separate things reached out to each other and actually collaborate to be on each other's show. Um, and and again, just seeing those connections, people connecting, expanding their networks, uh, expanding. Um, their audience getting to know each other collaborating on projects it's like to me that that we we, we're doing something right people are connecting people are moving forward and they're learning from each other and building great content build the content build the community first everything else will follow there it is yeah well it's funny that you say that because like you know we've, we've got an atlas in the chat the people that are here on the screen are second third and fourth connections of, of from all from you know just because atlas's girlfriend came to vegas for a convention or something like that and like oh, here, wow. and here we are yeah and that's it like if she had gone somewhere else if they would have had the convention in buffalo the three the the four of us would have never met isn't that weird that's wild that's so wild yeah, yeah. but um you, 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 before you said you want to know yeah, what's funny yeah so I introduced tony to law I met law in beyond I met law through Eric so I introduced tony to law and then the funny thing, we all were supposed to meet because Tony and Law went to the same high school. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Different years. Oh, and we, were wow. there. we were and we overlapped. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> like it wasn't like I was on the way out and he was coming in. Like we were there like two years. For two yeah. years <laughs> in the same in the same school. I was just, I just graduated two years earlier than him. Yeah, yeah. And then even funnier, now we have Seabass in me, mm-hmm. where like Let's go. Let's go even further. Me, Seabass, and also Hutch were at the same NYCC show in 2011, but didn't meet until way after that. I'm I like I did that show for like a day. I wasn't really feeling it. Left. Yeah. Years later, fast forward. I'm you know starting to go to cons more. I'm starting to get the understanding and feeling for. It. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, uh, you know, I would love to be a part of this and do this. A couple months later, I meet Hutch. Yeah. Start working with Hutch, start doing the things with him. Seabass already met Hutch and he starts, you know, uh, networking with him and talking with him. He does in Beyond Con. Mm. And I'm looking at this name on the list because I'm the event coordinator at the time. And I'm like, who the hell is. Oh, oh, you're that guy. Okay. I, I'm trying to figure out the artist. If yeah. your name is the artist name or the, this name or whatever the case is. Yeah. And then, you know, look at this now. Like, yeah, it, I went by my governor. But it's yeah. funny because it's like, uh, and I think just like just recently we were having a conversation and I want to show you how it's just funny how we were all supposed to meet. Well, I'll go with Law first. Law's friend Ziggo mm-hmm. knows my brother, Sean. Okay. And when I found that out and I was like, yo, you know, Ziggo knows Sean, my brother. And I was like, oh, wait, that's again, just a sign. And then me and my wife were having a conversation with Tony and his wife about how we were moving back to the Bronx and we were talking about a building that we were going to move into. Mm-hmm. Not knowing this, that Tony and his wife were originally looking at that building at one point too, <laughs> before they moved to where they're at. Where and we then were, the same, we and then the same shystiness happened to them as well. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wait. So it was kind. Of, it was kind of crazy. Also, speaking to the NYC Comic Cons, were you guys there in 2013? I was. Yeah. I, I was, was not there. So I went to okay. NYC for the first time in 2011. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. And then I didn't go to cons again until 2014. I think, yeah, 2014. And then uh, started like working with uh, and Beyond at 2015. 
Okay. Yeah, I think I was, yeah, I think I was still a fan. I was a fan still then in 2013. Yeah, I went because I was writing at the time, so I went to that one. And then I was supposed to go to 2014, but then when you know, then I had, uh, I had to sell my tickets. Right, right, right. You were working. You were working, Rob. That was the other uh, fun thing where, uh, because we both realized that me and Tone went to the same high school. One of one of my boys that I, <laughs> I met through in-house suspension or detention question mark uh rob i met through there uh was he was working with him like doing pax e shows and a bunch of all these shows and i was like oh shit yeah like i i've now seen rob you know at comic cons and whatnot and said what's up and he was like yeah i've been doing this for a while i was like how did i not know this like i just got into this space now oh wow that's crazy Oh, and yeah. also, I, I wanted to make make sure I uh, said this. Atlas's girlfriend, Christina, says, you're all welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we and, love you, Christina. And I, and I absolutely do thank her. It has carried me through. It has carried me through a lot of really dumb stuff. So so thank you. I'm, I'm really glad that your company sent you here. So thank your, I guess, thank your boss <laughs> for, having, <laughs> right. for having whatever that was in Vegas. So, you know, there it is. So, uh, so speaking of the business side of things, we talked about that just a little bit uh, ago. One thing that that is often left out of the the conversation when you when people are talking about creators and creating and even the business end of things is the analytics. Now, I know that that it's it's not a um, it's not a huge thing, but how do analytics like how do you use the the different analytics from the different companies? you know, that you, that you, that you use as a platform, you know, you've got your Google analytics, you've got Twitch analytics, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. How do you use that? Or do you use that to guide your programming? Like if, if someone uh, is like, I want to make a comic book all about socks <laughs> and it comes <laughs> out and it does nothing. Like, is that a situation where you got to go to the guy and be like, man, Yeah, you know, all right. I guess the the, the two over here are insane crap. So I, I guess, that's that's fair. Yeah, uh, right, it's, it's listen, fine. So listen, like, for the twi- I was for the, the marketing manager for years. So, like, so, for, so the, I'll leave you for the Twitch stuff. That's all you. That's all. That's all you. But like, so we haven't really been going crazy with the analytics at this point because it's been like we're gonna create. We're creating our show mm-hmm. for the audience that we cre- curate. Right. We're not yeah. doing anything controversial. We're talking to creators and we're reviewing things like that is clearly something that is that is going on. And we want to create the show that we want to watch. We want to listen to. Yeah. I think that's like the first the first step. Right. Uh, wait, I'm seeing. Oh, I'm loving. I'm loving. Hey, hey, listen, listen, man. Maybe it's just not the right time for Captain Socks. <laughs> it's true. It's not. It's you know? not. It's definitely it's definitely not. Yeah, I, um. I mean, the but bad the guy, thing- the, the <laughs> evil corporal moth, I get it, but like <laughs> the big, the big, I'm, bad I'm, is- I'm gonna- the big thing for us is what was really interesting for us was the YouTube analytics. Oh, yeah. um, after we went, after we started going live on, so Mandalorian season two, which is the rebirth of Nerds of the Round is what I like to say, right? Mm-hmm. You, there is a, dr- there is a complete change of viewership uh time of uh, subscribes that changed wow. uh we've we you know because we went live so originally we were doing uh just spotify just our regular anchor stuff mm-hmm. and then every once we were trying to figure out a video component and we were trying to figure out what we were going to do we decided we're going to do the stream yard because the stream yard worked for mbm con last year and we're going to we're going to start streaming content on StreamYard to get our uh up-to-date with pop culture content out because Jesse, uh, CBS's wife, she edits all of our conversations with creators. And so that takes time and we're not, we don't, we want her to take your time to create what she needs to create. So those come out when those are ready, but we wanted to still have time of, uh, you know, top of mind content. So we need to figure out a way to do that. So that's what the stream yard came in. So we're going live every single Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Uh, talking about Mandalorian Mandalorian season two. That was our bread and butter and maybe a little other topics or whatever, pretty much the Marvel Disney plus shows. And then anything else we're kind of watching is what we're doing to kind of get that type of top of mind content. Mm -hmm. When we started doing that and started seeing the interactions we were getting, we decided to look at the YouTube analytics. We realized that we're getting more interactions and, and more, just more everything through YouTube from doing that. The anchor stuff, the Spotify stuff, it's kind of taken a back burner 
because we're doing we're doing so much focused video content and then yeah. that's all just getting translated over to audio for Spotify and we're just letting it live there. Mm-hmm. We're really trying to create a space on YouTube. And that's would say the been the biggest set of analytics that was that was useful for us because we were able to see everything that was going on. Yeah. Eventually so- when we, you know, create our site we'll do Google analytics and all that stuff. Cause you want to see where everyone's coming from and all that jazz and kind of see, yeah. you know, see the bigger picture. Um, but for us personally, YouTube eventually GA, um, but analytics are great to know yeah. pretty much where your, where, where your fans are coming from, where your content's going, how long people are staying, mm-hmm. um, trying to figure out why people are leaving. So that's kind of why we try to stick to an hour for a show. We don't mm-hmm. want to go too long or anything. So, um, but yeah, like, at least get yourself get yourself involved in it. I know yeah. a, a platform we work we worked with. We had a we had a, an interview with Global Comics. They have a fantastic analytics backend that is it, it syncs. They they created from scratch from the bot from the bottom up so that everyone who puts their comic on their website can see the analytics of people who check out their comic how where they fall off so you get the whole funnel you get the funnel from where they drop in and you can see where they fall off to the page. Oh, so you wow. can kind of see yeah. so you can see what's going on. You can see where they're where they're getting all your info from. They, and yeah. they built it from the ground up. So it's all integrated within their site, within mm-hmm. your account. So the people don't have to learn a new system. Like you don't have to learn GA, you don't learn like they do it for you and they provide mm-hmm. that information for you as part of like your account. Yeah. So give you that info. Because the more info you have about what you're creating, the better you can, you know, focus it and curate it to um to those around you and it's just good yeah. information to have these are all skill sets to to just have and to you don't have to learn ga if you don't want to but you should you know do know something in regards to the data that's going out for the stuff that you're making so to pick back off tone like it's good to know but don't drown yourself in analytics especially when you're first starting out right that's yeah. why i think that's why we you know now are just like community and the content yeah. get those out first yeah and then when you know things are coming in where analytics are going to heavily influence and play a part into you know who you're reaching out to as terms of sponsorships and what you need and like you know they they're like how many people are you getting to watch you they're starting to ask those questions then analytics are important but like yeah. early on when you're just starting out you know have some goals but like don't let the analytics you know no. be the end all be all it's just, it's also being a master student. You have to be a master student of your craft. You have to yeah. learn stuff. Like you know, I, at the end of the day, it's like everything that everyone's saying is right. It's true. Um, but you do have to be a master student of your craft. You have to. Yeah. If something like again, when you're releasing Captain Sticky Socks and it's not working, you have to be a student and research why Captain Sticky Socks is not working. And you may have to change something. I did want to circle back though to what to what uh, to what Tony was saying. Um, you said that there was there was a thing that was the catalyst of, uh, that that had to do with Mandalorian two, or was it just the fact that it was Mandalorian two that you were discussing, or what did you guys change uh, when Mandalorian two came out? It, it was it was it was literally just we were trying to f- so to back up when mm-hmm. we were doing in persons, we would have multiple shows in person. We would just kind of just do them all together. So oh. we have the creator series and then have whoever was on the creator series kind of do like a, you know, shoot, shoot the wind type of show with us okay. about a, about a topic or if there was a movie coming out. We would do the movie review and then we post that mm-hmm. when the pandemic happened, we really got into a rut of doing interview after interview, after interview, after interview, which is great in regards to building that community and getting to know people. But we weren't, we, we took a back seat from what the nerds of the round was when we first kind of started, which was just, a bunch of guys sitting around a bunch of nerds sitting around talking about what we're into pop culture because yeah, we all yeah. we're all nerds in our own way and we all have our different things that we're really focused in on right yeah um so we we had like that conundrum it was like we got to figure this out it was like we still want to do creator series and we want to do top of mind stuff but we cannot add more content for jesse to edit like that was the that uh. was the key to the answer so because if we put more stuff for her to edit She's got other things she has to take care of. We can't expect her to edit something and then get it out the next day to be top of mind. Like mm-hmm. that's just that's 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 an expectation that's so we cannot have. That's 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 out of bandwidth. We don't have that. Yeah. And so we weren't gonna. That wasn't even part of the. That was that was out of the question. Mm-hmm. So we did the experiment with uh, Streamyard. Worked perfectly. See, Bass was like, "Let's do. Let's start doing the Streamyard stuff." 
uh, I was I was definitely here for. I was like, okay, cool. What let's was uh, yeah. Con allowing us to do those panels where when we got that push to 100 and saw how Streamyard work, and mm -hmm. then like see, you know we had that conversation. We're like, oh yeah, we could we could do that. Like yeah. And then, you know, we figured we're going to start doing our streaming for Mandalorian season two. Mm -hmm. And we did episodes one and two. And then from there on, we just kept at it. So it wasn't and Mandalorian was just was huge because it was season two. So it was at that right. point. It was it, it's a it was a, a household name at this point. Mm -hmm. So it was just people kind of taking in any sort of content. And we kind of rode that wave and realized this is what works for us in regards to talking about pop culture stuff. Yep. As long as we stay within a week or so or a couple days after it airs, that's the that's the secret sauce for us. So that, and that's when we started noticing our YouTube traction was moving up and having more interactions. We were having people who we didn't know jump into our stream and comment mm -hmm. to us. And, and so, we're also you know, that was a on other platforms as well, which also helps. Cause it's like, we have a, you know, we've been growing this YouTube audience, but our Facebook audience as well is like alive and well, uh, Twitch really? is starting to slowly come along, but it's, it's awesome. I, I found that, that YouTube is better for discoverability, but Twitch is better if you already have an audience. Right. And so yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been looking at that and, and there may be, there may be shifts as, as time goes by for exactly that. So but we do need to get over to the post game, but before I did that, I did want to get one more thing into the main thing. I was having a conversation recently about scope, right? Not the mouthwash. But like, you know, the, when, when you, <laughs> cause we were talking about this show, you know, when we encompass all things maker, right. Mm -hmm. We have had people on that are building an RV. We've had people on that do security, uh, uh, you know, systems in their home. We've had people on, uh, that are all into NFTs. It's, uh, and we've had people into electronic music. We've had DJs on, we've had, you know, all kinds of stuff making is such a wide thing. And my, you know, what the thing I was mulling around in my head was, should we tighten up the focus? Is it right where it is? How do you decide that? Cause if you, even, even in just Marvel movies, you know, if you went on a deep dive, there's 10 years of, at least 10 years of movie history there more than that. Right. So the, I guess my, what my question is, is how do you guys determine scope? I think when we first like kind of try to figure that out, that was one of the big questions was yeah. what are the key things that we like to discuss and want to like push forward. And yeah. uh, we had that discussion of like talking to creators and creating this creator series show was definitely like top of the list. Um, then it was, you know, talking about things in pop culture because we all love everything from anime to, you know, video games to pop culture movies and whatever what have you mm -hmm. and then you know we've even reached the point where we were like everything in between like so if there's something that we can all geek out about and nerd out about why not if we could turn it into a topic let's turn it into a topic mm -hmm. you and, know and and yeah i mean and and there's a lot of stuff to cover and the thing is is that we we're going to cover it or we're not going to cover it and it's just and when we're going to cover it, it'll probably just be in a random conversation because we have episodes where it, it will be random. Like, for example, during the Drink and Draw live we did. Or this past, or or this past about, Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah this past Tuesday episode, episode, episode was – That was a, that a was wild really card episode. Yeah. It was a good and episode, though. It yeah. was it was fun. And, and I think that's also, too, was the fact is this, is that – it's more about showcasing our personalities to people, mm -hmm. showing them, listen, we're just like everybody else out there, and we like having fun with this. It's this is mm. there has been no point where this hasn't been fun. Um, even though it's like you know maybe it's like someone shares something that we may not agree with, but it's like it's just not you know it's it's never that it's not fun. We're having conversations with each other. We're having fun talking about these conversations. Yeah. We're having fun creating this content, and that's what it's all been about. Um, when we do the creator series, um, the creator series, it, it, it's fun getting to showcase people. Like even when we don't know them, and they reach out to us, and like for example. Uh, the first person who reached out to us was from MLA Entertainment Ke Ke Keiko. 
who to this day is sweetheart, awesome, creating dope content. She's now even gotten into podcasting, which we fully support. She's expanding her creativity and everything and yeah. building her brand and all that. And and even she even did some panels for our show last year with voice actors. And it was just awesome with getting to do that. And at, that opened up an avenue for us to even seek out more creators. And we love it when creators reach out, like Jason Lennox, who we just interviewed, who created a book that's like, dude, I didn't know I needed this book. This book is so dope where have you been all my life to find out that he was also an artist that did work in heavy metal magazine i was like oh wow dude. i was like dude yeah. you're even cooler now holy yeah. shit <laughs> <laughs> and um again it's just showcasing people and just having fun with them we continue to have fun um and if one person comes out of that 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 starts to follow that person we did our job if they come out like oh i like this that one subscribe we did our job and yeah um I mean, even reaching out to the Hushira podcast, who was um, people, uh, one of the guys who told us from back in the day, reaching out to them. And now we're building a relationship with them, loving what they're doing and all that on Twitch and everything, mm-hmm. too. They're, they're talking about anime. Like, listen, we got to go on their show and geek out about anime. Like, we got we get to geek go on other people's shows like we're doing right now, Pong. Yeah. And geek out about topics we like to talk about. We're always going to talk about it. We're, yeah. we're, we're big talkers. Yeah, I remember <laughs> oh, one, really? of the, one of the first things that we heard uh, early on from uh, from one of Tone's co-workers, I think. You like, showed them the, the episode and they were like... Oh, uh, it was probably my boy who I played Destiny with. Oh. Okay. Well, what what was the, it, it might have been him, or it might have been it might have been a Zim. I don't know. It, I, it, it was it was the compliment that essentially said like you guys are just three guys who like you can tell that we're we're having a good time discussing everything anything like good old yeah. time friends from back way back when. Yeah. And you know discussing everything under the sun that like entertains us and you know we can have fun with. Yeah. You know we poke we poke our jabs at each other. We poke our jabs at you know fandoms, but you know we keep it light and have fun. Yeah. If you if you really want to capture the nerds personality of how we are, especially with our guests. Mm-hmm. I, I think one of the episodes that really captured us when we interviewed Dennis Knight, hmm. Dennis Knight. <laughs> and even after that episode was done, Dennis was like, yo, you guys are cool. I, I expected the podcast to be like this. Cause I thought, but it just was chill. That was his words. Yeah. And it was cool because Dennis came in with a bottle of Jameson on that episode. Yeah. That was, bottle didn't leave a, the house no. full. That was a, that it was a fun was time. Empty. Yeah, it was. It was a great ep- we 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 got it. We had a two great episodes that we recorded back to back. Yeah. Great conversation. We had fun and that's what it was and that's what it's always about. It like we would love to do more in-person episodes with a lot of people we've met. Like we've met a lot of people through the virtual shows that we normally wouldn't have gotten to meet if we were still doing it in person. Mm-hmm. And we know eventually we're going to do something with a lot of these people in person. Um, and again, it's just, that's what we are. We're just three guys who love talking about this, these subjects, who like having fun. And that's about it, man. That's, that's we want really you guys to join in on the conversation. Absolutely. Yep. I can't think of any better place to end the first hour than, <laughs> than, than right there. Well, there's no better place to end the first hour than after an hour and 15 minutes. So, so we'll go ahead and end the first hour there. So, uh, YouTube people, this is, uh, unfortunately going to be the, uh, the end of the road. Uh, like I said earlier, this, uh, this is all on behalf of the sin shop. Uh, we're a maker hacker space in Las Vegas, Nevada with the tools and material that you can use to make whatever your little heart desires. Now, uh, if you'd like to check out the shop or you want to come help us get the renovation finished, uh, join our discord at sinshop.org forward slash discord. Check out the shop build out channel and uh, figure out how you can help. If you're on YouTube and uh, and you like what you see, uh, fling us a like. It really does help our engagement and those numbers that we were talking about earlier. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't like what you see, drop us a comment and tell us why. Uh, because we do read everything and we we take every comment seriously. So, uh, well, okay, we don't take it seriously. But we definitely look at because <laughs> because I've seen some of you guys and you're, y'all are nuts. No, seriously though. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna go ahead and and, uh, and close out the uh, the first hour here. Uh, I am of course the Mighty Pong, and I have been here tonight uh, with the the whole the whole fam family from uh, Nerds of the Round. You can check them out uh, youtube.com forward slash the Nerds of the Round. You can find out more about them uh, right there. Thank you so much for joining us on the first hour. You, you guys are sticking around for the post game, I'm sure, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll be around. Sweet. All right, cool. Uh, We'll be right back then in two and two and maybe some more. All right, be right back. (laughs) 